Right, welcome to the Real Presence, Real Future podcast, a podcast dedicated to increasing the presence of Christ throughout the Diocese of Columbus through the values of boldness, collaboration, joy, humility, and active listening. I'm Father Mike Harchi, and today my guest is Father Shock. He's the pastor of Christ the King, St. Thomas, and vicar for Hispanic ministry, and also one of our new uh, regional uh, vicars. So, uh, Father, thanks for, for being with me. Let's begin with a prayer. Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, we entrust real presence, real future to your providence. Through your Holy Spirit, inspire us for mission and evangelization. Make us disciples after the heart of your Son. In times of uncertainty, grant firm resolve. When we are unsettled, provide peace. When we are timid, make us courageous. With our ears, may we hear your promptings. With our eyes, may we see your handiwork. With our mouths, may we share the gospel. And with our hands, may we serve you. Replace our hesitation with holy enthusiasm, so that in drawing strength from the Eucharist, every endeavor of ours may be for your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, Father Shock, thanks for taking the time uh, to, to be here and, and to, to talk about this a little bit, even with all those, uh, all those responsibilities that, that go with all those titles, being pastor of two different parishes, uh, being vicar for Hispanic ministry, which... Um, all of which you, you really excelled at, uh, and and it's a, a joy to be working with you and, and and a little more closely in the real presence, real future uh, initiative. Um, so as we kind of were kind of going through with with some of these other podcasts, some of these these um, values, and we don't have to like lock ourselves into one, but but that wonderful collaboration really kind of stands out to me and things that you've done. A lot of the stuff we've heard in the in that fall feedback from our, our pair sessions, in particular. Many parishioners who responded were, were saying they're, they're concerned about like uh, the, the the priest being overworked and and their kind of many duties and responsibilities. So your parochial vicar already is shared between Christ the King and Bishop Hartley, and and you were already shared between Christ the King and Vicar for Hispanic Ministry, and then you guys took on Saint Thomas, which kind of adds to that. So so how have you been able to to I don't know fulfill those duties and 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 kind of incorporate some of that collaboration and, and beginning stages in these kind of like early stages of, of real presence, real future, kind of responding to some, some more immediate needs. What's, what's that been like? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, let me say thank you for the invitation. It really is a joy to be with you, yeah. Father Harchi, and to share a little bit about my experience in the diocese and the parishes and collaboration. That's the name of the game. So yeah. I try and collaborate the best I can with my parochial vicar, that's Father Mike Bolton, and he yeah. is tremendous. He is an awesome priest, <laughs> yes. and it's, it's a joy to work with him. But together, he and I, we work with so many great lay leaders mm -hmm. in the parish and also in the diocese. So it's, in my mind, the, the key is finding that right team to, mm -hmm. to surround yourself with. And I'm depend on a lot of people at Christ the King. I depend on a lot of people yeah. at St. Thomas, and and they've risen to the occasion. They said, Father, we're here to support you. We're in this together, and we just want to advance the mission of, of these parishes, of these dioceses, of the diocese together. So with, that's really good. So, and, and you have these lay leaders and people to support you, and that's why you've been able to take on these things, like Vicar for Hispanic Ministry, vicar, Regional Vicar, as, as Bishop Brennan asked you before he left. So as you take that on, and your lay leaders and the parishes kind of step up and, and do these things, have the people in the parishes, just to be kind of real about this, have they experienced much difference in their sort of lived reality? With you, their pastor, taking on all these roles, people of Christ the King, people of St. Thomas now. St. Thomas, for the first time, doesn't have a sort of resident pastor, but they still have a pastor. Uh, so ha has, their, has their lived reality changed much with, with you being sort of spread so thin and your, your lay leaders kind of stepping up? What's yeah, how they I, responded to that? I um, can't bilocate yet, yeah. <laughs> so still working on that, of course, as we all are. But uh, the uh, the again, I think what we're trying to do is really take advantage of those opportunities when we're together. Yeah. So when I am at St. Thomas, for example, I celebrate the Mass over there every other weekend. Right. And when I'm there, I try and really be present. And I try and really um, listen attentively to, to the needs and what's going on in the community. And, and um, 
so you just have to um, be very, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's true. The, the people see me a yeah. little bit less, and mm. that's um, it's part of the reality. But I think they said when they see me less, they realize that they can step up and, and do what they can do. Okay. So what what are some, you, you mentioned before, like you guys did a Marian procession together. What are some other things that, or how did that go? And then what are some other things maybe the, the parishes are collaborating on? Yeah, so we, um, that was August the 15th. So the Solemnity yeah. of the Assumption, yeah, it good. fell on Sunday. And so that Sunday evening, I, I had been pastor both places for about a month at that time, maybe just over a month. And we came together to organize this beautiful procession from Christ the King to St. Thomas, right. which is all of three miles. And wow, it's a little longer than I yeah, thought. That's a that's, that's pretty good procession. Yeah, yeah. It, it was great. We had uh, English speakers and Spanish speakers, because both parishes, there's... Yeah. It's a multilingual reality in, in both places, and we had uh, an image of, of Our Lady, and we actually, it was a Eucharistic procession. So um, during those three miles, I carried the monstrance, wow. the Blessed Sacrament, some of the time, and Father Fulton carried the Blessed Sacrament some of the time, and Deacon Tom Phillips, the deacon at St. Thomas, yeah. he carried the Blessed Sacrament yeah. some of the time, uh, and prayed the rosary in English and in Spanish. We also had one of the decades in Polish because right. we have some of our Polish yeah, Dominican right, right. sisters uh, who attend Mass at Christ <laughs> the King. So it really was was beautiful. There was a lot, of course, prayer and song, and um, that was when I saw that um, ex- when I experienced that. I realized that okay, this is the Holy Spirit at work, bringing yeah. us together. And um, and now it turns out that we um, very recently we. Uh, combined our bulletins. We, we merged our bulletins uh, together. So we have one bulletin for both parishes, and on the cover of the bulletin is a picture of that procession. Uh, cool. and, and you can see um, all these hundreds of people uh, walking behind Mary and Jesus, and that's, that's on the cover of the bulletin. It says, we follow Jesus and his mother together. I love that. What a good image. And, and so, and that's, that's, that's a beautiful image, and to, it's to have people be reminded of that every single week. On the cover of the the bulletin is um, is a great reminder, and it is also a reminder for us. I mean, not only you said you were you were pastor those both those places for a month, and then you did that procession. So really, in like beginning with a, a significant prayer event, uh, which is great, and kind of like all of real presence, real future. You know, praying and at last lens through uh, the the forty days of adoration, and then the disciple maker index. Really, kind of like centering this on on prayer and helping to remind us right that no matter what happens. No matter what happens across our parishes, structurally in the diocese, who we worship never changes. Yep. You know, we continue to worship Jesus Christ. We continue to follow his teachings. And we, like, we, we adapt that to our, our lived reality and to, to our resources and to our experiences the best we can. Yeah, and, and what he's doing, I think, at this stage in the game, at this juncture in the history of the diocese, he is bringing us together. Yeah. We, we have to rely on each other. And, and just, again, to comment on that procession, um, who organized it? I mean, mm. it, I was involved, and the people from St. Thomas were involved, and people from Christ the King were, and Father Fulton, and everybody together, we we honored Jesus yeah. and his mother that day. And I think that's, we can't do it alone. It, it, operating in silos doesn't work in the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, we absolutely have to collaborate in, in order to evangelize. So... Mm. It's it. I don't know. Real presence, real future. I think is opening our eyes to the truth that we belong to each other. Good. And the Holy yeah. Spirit wants us to be together. And we can. And we love these places where we worship. Obviously, we 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 love them. They have a, a special place in our hearts. It's not just like going to to Kroger or Walmart or something. I mean, these are sacred places for us. Um, but yet we we have to continue to acknowledge it's 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 you know who we worship is most important, not where we worship and. And as you and I have, have seen in, in our hard work with the, with the other vicars, with our, our core team here at the diocese, that, that we're doing a lot of work to, to try to see how that, how that all ends up for our uh, kind of next round of, of modeling and, uh, and providing people some more, some more options and recommendations to, to consider. It's like, what's our, what's our future going to look like? Yeah, what's our future going to look like? And I think we have to maintain a spirit of, of not just hope, hope, absolutely, but 
but enthusiasm. Yeah. There is this joy that the Lord is inviting us into. And when I see things like this Eucharistic procession, mm-hmm. I it's like, wow, this is just the beginning of this collaboration. And yeah. we were rolling out the next round of models, and th- that uh, there is this, um, I don't know, uh, I, hopeful expectation. We have an expectant faith that God is going to do great things yeah. through this process. Have people at either parish come to you since this is, you know, we, we had to do this just based on number of priests, really, in, at this part of the, the, the initiative. We, we, whether or not we're doing a planning initiative, we would have had to make this decision. Have they come to you with any, like, nervousness? Um, no, not not yet, no. Um, what are... Um, what what's their their sense? I mean, we are just trying to flourish yeah. today, and Good. we are saying, "All right, what's um, what's the next right move for us?" So, um, and also, we constantly we're looking to grow. I mean, yeah. this is not um, in in Christ the King, Saint Thomas. We're not inward focused. It's just, it's also, I hate to mention again, but that, that procession, we were in the streets. Yeah. We weren't confined to the four walls yeah, of Christ yeah, the King good, or St. Thomas. Witness. We were, were out, and, and we want people to know that, all right, um, Jesus has a plan not just for the Catholics at these two parents. It's, Christ has a plan for everyone. Amen. Thanks, Father. Thanks, Father Shock, for being with me today. Uh, thanks for joining me for the Real Presence, Real Future podcast. You can view today's episode on the Diocese of Columbus YouTube feed or you can listen to the podcast on the stgabrielradio.com and St. Gabriel Radio's app and anywhere else that podcasts are offered. Until next time.